<laughs> Hello, welcome or welcome back. So please choose one leg to work with. I would recommend to choose your standing leg. And so you have two legs, one leg is, I hope you have two legs. One is specialized in moving, so that's the leg, which is easier to lift, easier to move, easier to do stuff. That's the leg you will kick a ball with, or that's the leg you would take a first step with. And the other leg, your standing leg, is the leg where you feel safe, where you feel secure. If something is shaking, this is the leg you come onto. This is your standing leg you find balance on. And we want to improve the, the standing leg. So we will move the standing leg. What a concept, to move the standing leg instead of moving the moving leg. <clears throat> so what is our first movement? Before we move, we have to uh, have, we, we need two more things. First of all, we need a non-sticky surface to move. For this purpose, you could use a small towel. Or a sock. Or a sock on the foot. But not a yoga sock. And the second thing you will need is something to hold on to, safety first. Something like a chair or a door frame. But not an ironing board. This is not safe. Now, for the first movement, we're going to work with the standing leg. So strange to move the standing leg. So, for me, it's the left one. Um, just move your foot. The left foot in this, or you could translate it to if it's your right, is your right. But I move the left foot a little bit left and right. Keep standing on your heel. So your weight, let's keep it with left. You have your weight on your left heel. And it's just the toes that move to the left and to the right. And, so that's the challenges, don't hunch your head over to look at your foot. I think it's so interesting to look at the foot and how the foot is moving to the left and to the right. But resist this temptation and try to find an uh, upright posture. <laughs> Did I catch you here? To find <laughs> the upright posture with your eyes on the horizon. And uh, don't forget that you have a body. So you poise your head, you balance your head on over what? Over your pelvis. Uh, while you move your forefoot to the left and to the right and because it's your standing leg you might feel yeah this is a bit sticky this doesn't move so well to the left and to the right so one trick would be to have the left foot a little bit more in front of you so you already bring more weight onto your other leg and the playing leg so the left foot is free to move more to the left and to the right so this would be a trick but for the first movement try to keep the left foot underneath your pelvis and rotate rotate your leg yeah. so <laughs> let's move on to the second variation keep rolling your leg so it's like you uh, rotate your leg along its circumference. Circumference, so uh, the whole leg is rotating a little bit to the left and to the right with your weight mostly on your heel somewhere or maybe in the middle of your foot. So this would be the natural line to be somewhere on, in the middle of the arch of your left foot. But allow your pelvis to turn together with your forefoot. And so this means the whole torso rotates to the left and to the right together with your left leg and also now allow your head to roll to the left and to the right so the whole upper body is like stiffened up on top of your left leg it's like your left leg is moving your whole your whole everything else and so of course that's a movement in your right hip joint so you're rotating around your right leg and basically we <laughs> switch standing legs so you bring you have your weight more on to your right leg instead of your left leg 
and keep uh, keep doing this a little bit until you have a feel for that that when the toes of your left foot point to the left then of course the pelvis is also rotated a little bit to the left and the whole spine is and the shoulder girdle is locked on the pelvic girdle and you're facing to the left just like your toes are facing to the left maybe we need a little bit of this optical check so that the head is in alignment with the toes to the left and to the right so that this moves together so this is our second movement and after you got the hang of it after so it's uh, yeah it's like in school you start to you st start to understand the algebra you start to be able to work with it and as soon as you are able to do it of course there's the next step <laughs> The next topic, there's no time to in dwell on our skills. So come back to the first movement. So you just stand, like you stand in front of me, you stand parallel and just move your left leg to the left and to the right. Did this become any better now in this reference movement? One, two, three, so this is the third movement. So again, place your left foot in different locations, maybe so you shift your weight over onto your right foot so that more weight is on your right foot and you, your left leg is free to rotate so you can put your left foot further in front of you or more to the side or you could bend, bend your knees a little bit when you do this. So when you notice, the more you will you notice if you notice the more you bend your knees of course the more tired your right leg will become but the more you bend your knees the easier it will be for your forefoot to move to the left and to the right because there's something happening and we will explore what is happening shortly but just try this explore this do you remember did you ever have this dance this twist dance where you where you have to bring your pelvis a little bit backwards and we have to go into knee and then you can dance the twist. But in our case now, it's not a twist, but it's a rotation right and left. And then come back up to stand. And just feel, ooh, did this already do something? So these are like four steps which already can do something. Maybe if we take a little bit more time to explore them, but for, for this lesson, I think it's enough. And when you now stand on both legs again equally, you will notice maybe that your left leg already is a little bit easier to rotate. And which means, which means when it's easier to rotate, which means there's more ease, ease of movement and in turn, the nervous system will have an easier time to choose when there's possibility to choose the right alignment for the leg. But how does our operating system choose alignment as soon as it's possible? So we talk to our body through movement. And let's continue this conversation with the body through movement in a different position. So we provide options to ourselves and then the operating system, I just came up with this concept, oper how, how strange is that? Then the nervous system, how, something inside of us, which is also us, can choose the optimal alignment. So please, the next movement, come to kneel. So kneel on your right knee and have your left foot standing. And I need cushioning to make our life more comfy, some cushions. Ah, and we had this beautiful lesson, kneeling to standing, where we really looked at how to kneel. So all the things we did before, of course, applies to this lesson as well. So, left foot standing, right knee standing. So we have this wonderful direct connection through, through the right leg, through the right knee into the ground. So I stand my foot, gives me a little bit more stability. Stand the right foot, stand the left foot, the left foot with the sole on the floor. And then what's the movement we are going to do? Of course, um, the forefoot to the left 
and to the right. So move the toes of your left foot more to the right and take again your heel, your left heel as a point of rotation or something in between the heel and the toes. Where's the, where's the point of rotation? But maybe it's easier just to think of the heel as the point of rotation. The toes to the right and the toes to the left and the toes to the right and the toes to the left. And you can, of course, use, if you prepared that, a chair or hold on to a wall or a door frame. So our movement is to keep the left knee stable in space, so you could lean on your left knee to remind your left knee not to move left and right, isolation, confinement, sorry about this, and just the forefoot to the left and to the right. Strange enough, but see the, what is it, fibula and tibia, I think it's the fibula on the side and it has a little head and this head suddenly can start to move when you, we bring the toes of the left foot to the left and right. So there's two bones in the lower leg, just like there's two bones in the lower arm, and these two bones can rotate around each other, not down at the ankle, but below the knee. So the knee is a quite complicated joint, and that's quite surprising that it's so sturdy and so forgiving. Okay, so the next movement, how can we improve on this pattern, on the overall pattern, is to take the knee together with the foot. So when you bring your toes to the left, also allow your left knee to move to the left. And when you bring the toes of your left foot to the right, also allow your knee to move to the right. So it's like this whole leg moves to the left and to the right and they have a relation so the foot the forefoot moves and the knee moves back and forth so that's a very musical lesson it's like really like a dance and what about the pelvis? Do we have to move the pelvis? I think we should have the pelvis fairly stable. I, I just invented this lesson a week ago and I've been improving on this lesson since and I just love it. <laughs> this lesson keeps getting better and better and you will see in the end uh, the effect is also marvelous but I really like this lesson. So. Toes to the left, knee to the left, toes to the right, knees to the right, pelvic stays stable. So it's a movement in the left hip joint while not hunching forward, while not observing with our eyes too close what's going on, but uh, upright, the noblesse. We humans, we, have, uh, we can overlook our environment. What's happening? Is there any good food around me? <laughs> and so, that's that movement and then yeah for breaks I don't know I, I just keep going because this lesson is so dynamic I just want to keep going you could take breaks breaks if you like if, if you feel tired on your knee so we had the buttocks lessons a marvelous little lesson to support the kneeling position actually so let's let's should we take a break just for the right knee I guess just so just come up to stand I, I guess it's more and I don't want, sorry for me not moving the camera, so I will just keep the camera like it is and take a little walk. So I'm the man without head, beheaded man, the headless man, no head on my body. Okay. <laughs>
what is possible on YouTube nowadays is just amazing. So then come back to kneeling onto the onto your right knee. Was this break too short? I don't know. It should should be enough. Okay. Same position like we were just in and now let's do a even stronger differentiation so move the toes of your left foot to the right and keep the toes of your left foot to the right but so we will work with the left knee so this is our starting position the toes are to the right and then move your left knee to the right and back to where it was, move the left knee to the right and back where it was and if you do this slow enough and carefully enough the range of motion will start to increase but keep the toes of your left foot to the right but allow your left foot to become soft allow your left foot to tilt from one edge to the other and if you allow for this then suddenly you will have more range of motion available easily comfortably to your knee so the knee can also go to the left and not just to the right the knee can go to the left and to the right did you notice this change when the foot suddenly becomes soft and the foot the left foot allows for for the knee to make this movement. So your, your left foot tilts a little bit, comes off the floor a little bit. Or you could try to have the sole of your left foot not leave the floor, which is a constraint. And then there needs to be even more flexibility in your left foot, all the little bones in your left foot need to move to accommodate this movement in the ankle and in the knee. Let's see, <clears throat> when I come up to look around. Okay. And then flip, not flip, but move the toes of your left foot to the left. And then, of course, the left knee is angled more towards the left and start the same movement in this position with the left knee going more to the left and then a little bit back to the middle and to the left again and to the middle and maybe when the foot softens up accordingly what do you have to allow to move so that the, the knee can actually come over more to the right easily so there needs to be a movement in the hip joint and in the back so that the knee can go to the left and to the right and once this is clear this movement becomes starts to become familiar we return to kneeling so and then uh, what will happen next return to the first movement so you're just kneeling on your right knee and you have your left foot standing and move your left foot the forefoot to the left and to the right and so this or allow your knee to go with the forefoot or do not allow your knee so this movement open up a bit this became more available and let's see, I think we need to have a break because of the right knee mostly. So uh, either come to lie down or come to stand up. But if you choose to come to stand up, I think that's the better choice. Because then you can feel, wow. <laughs> I, I can <laughs> already feel it that I can feel my foot much better and I hope you have the same experience that you can feel your heel much better you can feel wow how the weight is coming down onto your foot so which really makes the standing foot the standing foot 
Wow, yes. This is alignment. I hope you have this feeling. If you have this feeling not yet, of course, the lesson continues, so there's more chances to arrive at this marvelous feeling of support, or you have to start from the beginning if this was too rushed, so we could, um, if you do this a couple of times, you can ease into it more likely. But let's continue, let's take a few steps. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm so happy with the lesson I'm developing here. So. Let's continue with the... Yes. <laughs> it's, it's like the, the foot has more... The foot has more strength. The foot really like... It's like, a, it's like a refresh. It's better than a good sleep. It's better than a good massage actually. Wow. It's really... I feel the support. I'm quite <laughs> blown away by this. So, But maybe this is my specifics. Maybe I have a shortcoming in this. Maybe there was something too stuck in myself and now I have this uh, marvelous effect. Um, even though I did this lesson now like five times, it's like... It's like really surprising. Let's continue. So uh, for the next movement, please come to kneeling again, but this time kneel on your left knee. So your right foot is standing and you're leaning on your left knee. And the left knee is, the left leg is the one we're working with. So find this place on your hip joint where you're on top of your left knee. And then our movement, the movement in this position is to move the left foot left and right. So it's a movement in the feeling. How do I know if I not look? How do I know that my left foot is... That's so funny. How do I know my left foot is moving to the left and to the right? And that's just because of my proprioception, or because of the feeling in my body. So the left foot is moving to the left and to the right. You could have a look, a look-see. If it is moving, yes, it is moving. Or you could feel with your hand that your left leg is rotating, actually. So in order to get the left foot to move to the left and to the right, the left leg has to rotate. And here we have our differentiation. So do we rotate with or without the hip? Is it a movement in the left hip joint or is it a movement in the right hip joint? So let's do this differentiation together. When you move your left foot to the right, allow your pelvis to move along, which means to move the pelvis to the left, to lock your shoulder girdle on top of your pelvic girdle and your head on top of your pelvis, like the whole spine, the whole chest moves as one block to the left and to the right. And of course, now this is a movement in the right hip joint. So when everything, so that you keep your, that your foot, your right foot on the floor. So we could have worn that non-slippery, the sticky five finger yoga sock on the right foot would have been a good idea. So the right foot is sticky and the left foot, the standing leg is not. <laughs> this concept alone to switch, <laughs> switch legs for a moment to switch the specialization, to make the standing leg the moving leg and the moving leg the standing leg. I should get a prize for this lesson. <laughs> so I, I think I have so many good ideas in this. I, I'm not trying like to pat my shoulder too much, but I'm, I'm just like, I'm just like, <laughs> I hope you can forgive me for that. So either, either the whole body except for the right leg is moving together with the left foot or, or let's turn this around again, you keep facing forwards in the direction of your right knee 
and you keep your show everything towards forwards and you're only moving your left foot to the left and to the right. Of course, need to relax the neck and the jaw and the eyes, everything needs to be relaxed. And so I can use the, the, the chair maybe to make this constraint even stronger and just move the left foot left and right. And of course, on the slippery little pillow or this is my little blanket, the left knee can turn so nicely. Or the whole body rotates together with the left foot. So again, we have this differentiation in the right hip joint. <laughs> I could just keep doing this. It's such a nice movement. <laughs> Or the whole body, or only the leg, or the whole body. Open, close, open, <laughs> close. <laughs> open, close, or just the leg by itself with the pelvis stable in space <laughs> or with the foot standing or with the foot flat. I don't know why I like this movement so much. <sighs> okay, so after playing with this little friend, it's time to say goodbye by and to come up to stand and see if we can still stand, if it's still possible to stand or if it is possible, how does it feel like? So let's check, let's come up to stand. First I put on my socks. Now, for me, the difference is not so pronounced anymore. It's not like this crazy novelty, like this extreme bony connections to the left heel. It's just, it just feels more natural now to be, to be on, the, on the left leg. It's just more integrated already. I, I, feel, I feel like this is the way it should be. It's not... Bam! Wow, here's something new, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm upright, I'm supported, but that's just how it should be. How is it for you? And of course, as always, please share your experience in the comments if you like to share, if you like other people to, to read what you experienced. So we will have a last differentiation, a last couple of movements I added to this lesson. And this movement will be lying on the floor on your back. So please come to lie onto your back. And then please stand your right foot. Again, we should use the non-sticky sock. Stand your right foot and have your left leg extended. And just roll your left leg like in standing. You could imagine you are standing 
and on your left leg and the same thing like we did in the beginning of the lesson in standing to move the left forefoot to the left and to the right so this is a movement in the hip joint mainly to turn rotate your left leg around its circumference around this axis and you could do the same trick like me i'm using my hands to help me feel what's going on so I can feel my leg turning in my hip joint. So maybe you can feel, I, I think it's quite interesting like to feel the muscles that are tight or muscles that are soft. Muscles that are tight that become soft and then tight again depending on where the or tendons, what is it, what is a leg. And now we will move the leg, the left leg, rotate the left leg together with the pelvis. So when you roll the toes of your left leg to the outside, ro also roll the pelvis to the left. So we did this many times already. So you stand your right foot in a good position, biomechanically good position, a position that makes sense, mechanically makes sense to push with the right foot against the floor. So if your right foot is on the couch, it doesn't make sense. If your right foot is on the left side, it doesn't make sense. If it's too far, there's a good place for your right foot to stand. So you can push against the floor with your right foot to roll your pelvis to the left. And then your leg also rolls to the left. And when you bring your pelvis back to the floor, allow your... So this is how I started this I started to construct this lesson. This is how I started to, to build this lesson. So this was my first movement. I was thinking of a dear patron and his right leg and I started with this movement to, to roll the, the right leg. So this is why I often confuse in this lesson the right leg and the left leg. I started to roll the right leg. So now it's rolling the left leg and then I built all the movements around it and I, I saw how marvelous this lesson is. So you roll your pelvis together with your left leg. Or you roll the left leg without the pelvis. And then take a short break. <laughs> we could call this lesson the lesson with only one sock. <laughs> and then stand both feet and the knees pointing towards the ceiling. And so, yes, so you can feel with the left foot is so slippery with the sock, especially on, if you have a slippery floor like me and what do we do uh, move your left forefoot to the left and to the right keep the heel in position the same movement as always the same movement like in kneeling but now we are in lying down so there's no more weight on the left foot the left foot is quite free to move the left leg the left knee doesn't have much weight so uh, this is my idea to have a position where the left knee is unburdened and we can explore this movement with the left foot and then of course what did we do in kneeling we took the knee to, together with the forefoot so bring the knee to the left when you move the forefoot to the left and move the knee to the right when you move your forefoot of the left foot to the right so the leg moves together with the foot and when you start to play with this, you will notice it's also nice to clean the floor a little bit, to paint the floor, to let your foot slide on the floor to the left and to the right. And we have this sponge, this wet towel-like quality of the left foot that the bones in the left foot can move easily, that the muscles in the left foot, they let go and allow the sole of the left foot to stay on the floor 
So move your left foot around so that you can have the sole of your left foot stay in contact with the floor and move the left foot together with the knee so also allow your knee to go to the left and to the right and further away and closer or <coughs> or destroy this relationship don't move the knee only move the foot so this is so strange to move only the foot and not the knee so to hold the knee to hold the knee in place and and only move the foot or keep the foot still and only move the knee so that's another movement so, um, so there's a couple of variations which are all the same variations like we did in other positions already just to play with the left leg and the left foot to have this movement in the fibula and tibia in the two little bones not so little actually quite long the bones in the lower leg and to have the left foot so interesting so where could this go we could have we could have a lot more lessons with the foot and the foot and the hand and the foot and the leg but we don't need this right now um, i think we explored a lot already so uh, please rest one more time so this is our last rest so come to lie onto your back with the extended legs and just enjoy the, the this little pause and the after effects like when the poem the poem is finished and you feel oh this move something inside of myself i am touched So these last movements, they have been a little bit wild. So I apologize if it was a little bit too wild. I was <laughs> taken, <laughs> carried away a little bit. So we could have done it a little bit more systematically. Uh, I could have cued you to be more careful. But sometimes, sometimes... <sighs> So this is an important skill to, <coughs> to know when it's too much. So let's <coughs> finish, wrap this up. Please come back up to standing. Let's see how the leg feels now in standing. Please come up. And then we don't need the socks anymore. Just stand. And feel how it is in standing, feel your support. Let's do a last check with the left foot. The left foot on a surface that can move and move your left foot to the left and to the right and compare. Wow, so much easier, so much more freedom, so much better differentiation. If we come back to these first explorations, just to reference a reference movement to have a before and after. Yes, reference. This sometimes is important to do this little, just to, to have like a more complete lesson, a more complete experience. And there it is again this feeling of being supported <laughs> and this feeling comes from the leg being in the right place 
from the nervous system being able to choose from all the many options we provided. So if you don't have options, it's like compulsory. We don't have any options. We have to work with what we have. But now we went through so many different movements and possibilities and possible alignments for the foot that the nervous system really choose. Ah, oh, it's here. <laughs> it's here where I'm standing on top of the leg. And that's the support, the point of support. So easy. All right. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I did creating it. And thank you for watching. Take good care of yourself and see you in the next video.